Welcome to our commencement ceremony. Now let us begin as we return thanks. Let us pray. Our Father, creator of us all, giver of every good and perfect gift, sustainer of life, we thank you for these students you have entrusted to us. We thank you that you've created their minds, given them a love of learning, that you have created their hearts and given them a capacity for love. We thank you that you have set them on a path to growth in knowledge, love, and service. Christ, we thank you. We thank you for your presence among us, for your coming to be with us, to understand what it is to be one of us. And we thank you for your ongoing love of these young people, for your understanding, presence, and grace shown to them in, in, through new lifelong friends, through mentors, through triumphs, and setbacks, and opportunities for service. Holy Spirit, companion, guide, and strengthener, we thank you for your guidance and sustenance through all, through all night study sessions, relationships, classes, and jobs. We ask that you would come upon these that are gathered here. Fill them with your grace and your love. Give them peace and determination to face their future with assurance that wherever they go, they are not alone. In all things, we ask for your blessing, your kindness, and your peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, trustees, members of the faculty, staff and administration, graduates, families and friends, welcome to the 108th annual commencement ceremony at Spartanburg Methodist College. It's a big day today and we'll have a couple of housekeeping items and I want to give you one right now. This is the point in most commencement ceremonies where you're told to turn your phones off and I'm going to ask you not to do that today. It's 2019, I want to see you take pictures, live your moment, enjoy it, and capture it. Just put your phones on silent so we don't bother anybody, and be respectful as you go through today. We'll also have a little drone flying overhead at some point. It's, again, 2019. If you see it, it's okay to give it a little wave up there. It won't be around long. I want to thank uh, the bagpiper, our very own Brady Wakefield. This is the second year in a row. Yes, appropriately applauded. Brady is also a 2019 SMC graduate, and he's planning to attend Lander University in the fall. Soon to be graduates, just think about it. You stepped on campus a couple of years ago. Time flies, huh? Blink of an eye, snap of a finger. And the diploma that you receive today is going to be representative of all your hard work. It's not easy to do this. And a lot of people don't make it to this point. I'm incredibly proud of you. Got a lot of confidence in you to go forth in the future, and I'm looking forward to see what you're going to be doing down the road. We have a number of special guests today, and I want to introduce them and hold your applause until the end and all are recognized. We have from our board of trustees, Mr. Jim Thompson, who's the chair of our board and on the stage with me today, and he's going to assist me with awarding the degrees. The Reverend Jerry Gadston, Ms. Catherine Grambling, Mr. Pat Henry and his wife, Marvis, Dr. Frank Lee, Ms. Marilyn Murphy, and Dr. Harriet Rucker. We also have with us my wife, Teresa, and our daughter, Anna, one of six of our children that are here today, the family of Landon and Brady Wakefield, our student speaker and our bagpiper, the Keneally family, Dan Keneally is our soccer coach, he's been around for a long time, very valued member of our community, an important part of our family, and his daughter, Ashley, will be receiving her diploma today. Uh, Mark Hammond, a former trustee and Secretary of State, and his wife Jenny, their daughter Lillian, will be receiving her degree as well. And I want to thank Professor David Gibson and Dr. Mary Jane Farmer for serving as our faculty marshals. We also have three rising sophomores with us serving in the capacity of our student marshals, Andrew Brock, Haley Johnson, and Nahi Sanchez. It was seemed like yesterday when you came as freshmen and now... That's over, so hold on, it's going to go really quickly. We have three special guest marshals with us here in the front row, our junior marshals from our neighbor, Jesse Bobo Elementary School. We have a special relationship with Jesse Bobo, and each year our students and our faculty and staff spend time with them, and it's very, very rewarding on both ends, and we're honored to have them 
with us today, accompanied by Ms. Catherine Pogue, the principal of Jesse Bobo Elementary. Our three junior marshals are Savannah Davis, Ariana Gonzalez Gaspar, and Larry Proctor. We're glad you're here, and I want to make sure, I like the blue, I see a couple of blue sashes and a blue vest, I want to trade that for a blue SMC t-shirt in a few years, and you can be sitting over here with them as well. How about that? It's our custom at SMC to invite a graduating student to speak at commencement, and these are always much looked forward to. This year, the honor goes to Landon Wakefield. Landon, would you join me up here today? Landon was nominated by the members of the student body, and as she walks up on stage, I want to tell you a little bit about her. I got to know her quite well during her freshman year. She took my leadership and professional development class that Courtney Shelton and I teach, and she arrived early at the ADM class. It wasn't for credit. She was still there. She took every advantage that the course offered. She also interned at McMillan Pazden Smith, a well-known architectural firm in town and in the southeast. She traveled to Prague over her first summer studying art and history, presented her experience in learning to the student body. She's a member of the Entrepreneurship Club and traveled with them to New York this past spring break. She's also a member in the sense that she gets up at, is it 7 a.m. every Wednesday morning? And how many of you are in the Entrepreneurship Club? Raise your hand. These young people get up at 7 a.m. for no reason at all except to get better at what they do. And Dr. Jonathan Kiesler uh, leads them in that effort. And that's a fantastic way to start your day on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Doesn't carry any academic credit. She's president of the History, Culture, and Exploration Club. She received the Paul S. Lofton History Award, which recognized her and the ex excellent academic work that she has achieved. On top of that, she figures out a way to maintain a 4.0 GPA. Those nominating Landon to be the speaker had some very nice things to say, and I just want to pull out a few of them. Landon has an amazing attitude. She is caring and intelligent. I like this one the best. Nicest person I've ever met and hardest worker I've ever seen. It's a great combination. Landon plans to continue her education right here at SMC next year. Yeah, worthy of applause, of course. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our student speaker for the 108th commencement, Landon Wakefield. Thank you, President Cochran. Good morning, professors, President Cochran, Board of Trustees, graduates, friends, family, and other distinguished guests. I'm honored to be here with all of you on this memorable occasion. This day marks a special moment for each and every one of us graduates. It is a step forward, a leap of faith, and the next chapter. When I first found out that I was chosen to be the student commencement speaker, I had a wave of excitement and then bam, the pressure hit. Why me? What do I have to share? I listen to past commencement speeches and research what a speak, speech like this is supposed to incorporate. I realize that I'm supposed to share stories, wisdom, and advice. Yet here's the thing. I'm no better than all of my classmates who have a cap and gown on today. We've all succeeded. Let's give ourselves a hand. We are all going to walk across this stage and be handed a, a degree that we worked so hard to receive. So why me? Yes, we're in the exact same position today. We are graduating. However, it came to me that we all have our own stories. Some of us came here on athletic scholarships. Some of us came from Scotland, Puerto Rico, Colombia, or even like me, some of us commute. How we got here, our experience at SMC, and where we are going next makes us unique. My story is not extravagant and not as captivating as other stories that you may have heard in past commencement speeches. But I do have my story, and I believe everyone has one worth sharing. When you first start college, the first question people typically ask you is, where did you go to high school? My answer was, I was homeschooled. Now I either just scared them away or completely captured their attention. Most of the time, they just laughed and said, oh. <laughs> we all know that there's a stereotype for homeschoolers. Trust me, I'm well aware of it. We get questions like, were you socialized? Do you have friends? When was the first time you saw daylight? Do you know what Instagram is? The answer is yes, I have social media, and sometimes I spend too much time on it. 
To this day, my favorite memories are made when I spend time with my friends. Homeschoolers are not always the sheltered shut-ins you might think, but it is true that being homeschooled is different than being in public school. I was unsure of how the transition from homeschooling to college would go. It's a change going from four students in a class to 30 students in a class. I began questioning myself. What if I'm not smart enough? What if everyone makes better grades than me? But then I remembered that I am not the only one. Just because I was homeschooled doesn't mean that I'm different from everyone else. Most students are nervous when they go off to college. It's a huge step in their lives. We are human and we all have feelings, whether you studied at home or outside of the home. I had to realize that no matter what others think, I was just the same as every new student that was coming to SMC. Class of 2019, remember when we arrived on campus for our Pioneer Power Up and had to take our first class picture near the soccer field? Well, guess what? Our class was the biggest class since 1911. For those of you who don't know, the school was founded in 1911. We made history. I think that automatically means we are the treasured class. No one can take our place and we deserve to be pampered. Our class made memories that will stay with us forever. There were those special moments when we all gathered in a little circle during our first week and played those not at all awkward icebreaker games. Needless to say, I have grown some of those relationships that began with those icebreakers. And today, I am graduating with those same people who have now become my friends. We all experienced some exciting and not so exciting instances during our time here at SMC. We all suffered those late nights, or for some, all-nighters right before exams. For me, no matter how hard I tried, I could never pull one off. So congrats to those who have the self-control to not take a five-minute nap as a study break. It does not end well. We all survived the miserable winter walks to class and the winter temperatures in the Montgomery classrooms. I think I got frostbite in chemistry. As far as survival goes, we technically did just barely survive a catastrophic event in 2018. One afternoon, as classes were coming to an end for the day, the weather took a dramatic turn. I had just started driving away from school when SMC was hit by a tornado. Later, Professor Ward shared that he sheltered himself in the Walker building right after shouting to a student through the loud gusts of wind, get inside. I'm surprised he even had to shout because typically his good looks say it all. <laughs> a highlight of the campus was destroyed that day. Many of the beautiful luscious trees were gone, yet that did not stop SMC from finding a way to make this day positive. The students, faculty, and staff used this disastrous incident as a way to grow relationships on campus. Everyone gathered together to pick up the limbs and debris left by the tornado. We all know the saying, a family that works together stays together. Nothing could be more true when it comes to Spartanburg Methodist College. Family, that's a strong word, but let me tell you, SMC has it. A family laughs and a family cries and a family never gives up on each other. Every professor that I've had the pleasure of getting to know has never given up on me. And because each one of us is here today, it just shows that they have not given up on you either. With their guidance, we've gained skills that we can apply to our future lives as independent adults. They have pushed us to our limits, and even when we failed, they've taught us to get back up again. And, and let me tell you, we've all had failures. I'll never forget the time in my first semester when I took the professional development class with President Cochran. As the semester was coming to a close, we had to practice public speaking because every professional has to learn how to speak in public, unfortunately. They say that public speaking is feared more than death. I can believe it. My heart feels like 50 pounds as I speak. <laughs> anyway, being my perfectionist self, I typed up everything that I was going to say for my presentation. The day came and the dreaded time came and I stood up there with my sheet of paper. My focus was to make eye contact. I completed my speech just the way I had planned, but President Cochran had other ideas. He looked at me and said, Landon, I want you to do it again without your paper. I thought I was just to give my presentation and run back to my seat, but no, I had to do it all over again. 
As I was about three sentences into my second round, I hear President Cochran again. He tells me as he chuckles, you are literally repeating what you just said with a robotic tone because you have memorized it. The only difference is you aren't holding that white piece of paper. I realized then what President Co Cochran was trying to get me to accomplish. He wanted my words to come from my heart in that moment without a rehearsed speech that I had prepared in front of a mirror ahead of time. I had failed in that moment, but you know what? It should not be considered a failure. As I look back, I now consider that moment an accomplishment because I learned something new. I was able to take my failure and turn it into a skill that will be with me forever. Failure is a way to overcome your trials. Each one of us here has failed and hopefully had the strength to get right back up and face what life has to bring. Winston Churchill once said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Our experiences that we have growing up and that we've gained from SMC just add to our unique stories, just like President Cochran added to mine. As we graduate today, we have a major choice to make, and yes, it is a major choice as in big choice, but you literally have to choose your major. Some of us have decided to stay, to stay for the new bachelor's degree program, including me. Some of us have decided to transfer to the college of their choice, and others have decided that they will do great things with the education that they have received here. When we step down from this stage with our degrees in our hands, we move forward to the next part of our story. It isn't the end. Honestly, it is just the beginning. It is the beginning of our lives as former students or rising juniors of Spartanburg Methodist College. Look around. The friends that you are surrounded by are the future. You are the future. So go with excitement and add to your story, because I promise you, it's worth telling. Congratulations, class of 2019. We've made it. Hang on for a second. Landon, thank you. Before you head back to your seat, I have a little something for you. Dr. and Mrs. Bruce Yandel have been committed supporters of Spartanburg Methodist College and its students for a number of years. And in 2013, the Yandels heard one of our students speak and were very moved by it. And because of that, they established an endowment of a new award, the Yandel Class Leader Award, to honor the future student speakers. The award is given to the individual who's selected by classmates and carries with it a $1,000 scholarship. And Landon, I'm very happy to present you with that scholarship today. It's now my pleasure to introduce the SMC Troubadours, who will perform I Believe. The Troubadours are conducted by Dr. Lanny Lanford, professor of music and director of the SMC music program, and accompanied by Piper Aiden Bedley, who is graduating today and will also return next year to pursue her BA at SMC. I believe in the sun. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. I believe in love. I believe in love, even when I don't feel it. I believe in God. I believe in God, even when he is silent.
I love that song, right? What a perfect song. I believe. You got to believe, right? You got to believe that what you're doing is making a difference. You got to believe that you can do it. I, I am happy every time I get to hear the troubadours sing. They just do such an amazing job. Thank you, Dr. Lanford, for making that a reality. I'm very excited to introduce this year's commencement speaker. Ms. Hope Blackley began her professional career with the United Way of the Piedmont Village Partnership as a preschool teacher. She knows a little bit about education. From there, she joined Seventh Circuit Solicitor's Office as a child victim advocate, where she assisted and prepared children for criminal court, working under the direction of former solicitor and U.S. Congressman Trey Gowdy. In 2004, South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford appointed her as the crime victim's ombudsman for the state, and she also directed the Governor's Office of Victim Services, education and certification, where she helped write legislating, legislation creating the office. In 2010, Ms. Blackley was appointed Spartanburg County Clerk of Court, where she managed the day-to-day -day operations of the courthouse and the court system. This January, Ms. Blackley joined the United States Congressman William Timmons' team as his district director. In this capacity, Ms. Blackley oversees the administrative duties of the Spartanburg and Greenville district offices and staff, and as we were talking, that is not an office job, that is a moving job, ro roving around as she delivers on her duties. She served on numerous boards in our beautiful state and was a recipient of the 2014 Urban League's Whitney M. Young Junior Humanitarian Award. She serves on the Mary Black Foundation Board of Trustees and is a member of Cornerstone Baptist Church. She's the mother to a wonderful daughter, Corinne Blackley, who is currently a high school senior and at the state track meet. So she is zipping after this to go watch her daughter compete. And her daughter will be attending Winthrop next year. And she will also be a former, a, a future teacher. So please join me in welcoming Miss Hope Blackley. Good morning. Good morning to graduating class of 2019. I'm so delighted to be a part of Spalmer Methodist College's 108th commencement ceremony. As I thought of what message I wanted to share with each of you upon your exit from SMC and onto your next level of education, career, or life, I wanted to inspire, to enhance, and complement your outlook on this one life that you've been given by God. When one starts to think about what they want to do and how to achieve an end, these thoughts should be given much, much consideration, but not for a means to an end, but for an ends to a means. Let's talk real talk. We all work for a means to an end. An example, getting a paycheck, acquiring sick leave, vacation leave benefits. But how many people do you know work for an ends to a means? An example, enjoyment of life, team building, making a difference, and having a good quality of life for a purpose. Making money is also very important, but you have to give real thought to getting paid to do something that you actually like. Having a real purpose for working. I can tell you firsthand, liking, no, actually loving what you do professionally will leave you both professionally and personally satisfied. The difference in your life will be unparalleled. Just think, working in an environment, performing a duty you love, and surrounded by coworkers who are just as motivated is invigorating. All the while you are making a, sac a, a sufficient salary, what do you think your outlook on life will be? Now I know much of this sounds unrealistic, and for some it is, because how can you think you can find a job making a decent salary and doing a job you actually like? 
and having coworkers who feel the same about their jobs, but it's not impossible. Let's look at this plainly. The average workday is 7.5 hours a day. That's 37.5 hours a week. Let's round it off to 40 hours a week for a work week. Let's say your workday starts at 8.30 8, 8 a.m. and ends at 5 p.m. I know some of these hours could be totally different, but just go with me. As you get, and, and also including in that an hour lunch break. You leave work at 5 p.m., arrive home around 5.30, have dinner with your family, and in bed by 9 p.m., up by 7 a.m. for breakfast with your family and out the door by 8, 8 a.m. to get to work or to school, means you've only spent 4.5 hours of active time with the ones you love versus 7.5 hours a day with total strangers and non-family members. So with this scenario, would any of you want this type of work or schedule, doing something you half like or not liking at all? I know I wouldn't. I'll share a personal story with you in regards to family and work. I remember my mother working at Springs Industry while growing up, coming home every day frustrated and bone tired. She would be covered in lint and cotton flowers cotton fibers from head to toe and complaining about her work day. She worked at a job she did not like, although she liked her co-workers. The work was extremely hard. At times when they would have to work over, she considered that grueling. It was after growing up and seeing this on a regular basis that I wanted better when it came to a career and a work day. A career and work day where I could regularly enjoy my duties where I would have positive and negative experiences, but look forward to coming back the next day and then the next day, because I really like my job, my work environment, and my salary. I share this with you all because emphasis is always placed on getting an education and finding a job and making a lot of money, which I encourage all of you to do, but also encourage you to take a deeper look into what actually you actually would like to do while earning a living. I can guarantee each of you, your quality of life will be much better. It will be much better because those who do what they like experience lesser stresses by figuring past the negatives that will come along, all the while making money doing what you love and going about your day and to your family happier than not. When you think about these things that you want to do, that you want to get out of life, and you know where you want to be, you seem ready to take on anything that the world throws at you. Remember this, success only comes before work in a dictionary. I'll repeat this a little slower so it stays. Success only comes in the dictionary before work. Work only comes in the dictionary before success. In life, success only comes after working really hard to achieve your goals and your dreams. Success only comes after you've found your calling, you, your love for what you would like to do. You enjoy your work environment and coworkers, and you have found the path you must most likely enjoy. We all agree that we want the best possible job for us and one that we love, one that we are passionate about, and one that brings us a decent salary for us and our families. The question you must ask yourself is how do you get there from here? I'd like to ask each of you a question and I'd like each of you to ponder and give it some very deep and meaningful thought. What is your purpose? Only you can answer that, and you may not have the answer immediately or in the next year, but at some point in your life you're living, my hope for each of you is that you will find your purpose and live your best life. I will, I will leave you with a quote from a, from a former president of the United States that I've come to cherish in this life as I move forward in my own career and path. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who strives vigilantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who actually strives to do the deeds who knows a great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, 
And who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. So in this place, so that his place shall never be with the cold and timid souls, neither who know victory nor defeat. President Thomas Roosevelt. So please think about your purpose in life. Take hold of what pleases your interests and aim for a career that takes you to the next level. A level of greatness and newness for yourselves and your families. Remember you have this one life to live. Live it to your fullest and make your mark on this planet. To each of you I wish the very best and we look forward to seeing your greatness. Now, class of 2019, go be great and live your best life. At this time, we're gonna take uh, some time to recognize outstanding accomplishments of our graduating students in scholarship and service. I'm gonna ask Jim Thompson, the chair of our boards, to join me and assist me with the Trustees Highest Honor Graduate Award. This award is given to a graduate, graduating sophomore to underscore the Board of Trustees appreciation for the importance and the importance of the academic life in the college. The recipient of this award receives the Trustee Medal and a $500 cash award. This year we have three honor graduates. You'll understand why in just a moment. For 2019, and I would ask them to join us on stage, Piper Aiden Bedley, Ashley Keneally, and Landon Wakefield. And as they're wait, you may, let's give them a nice little round of applause. Please join us on stage. As they're walking up, let me tell you what it takes to be an honor graduate at this highest level. The, trust, the student must have been enrolled for SMC at SMC for a full-time four semesters. They must have demonstrated exceptional character that represents the best qualities expected of students at SMC. And finally, the students must have the highest cumulative grade point average in the graduating class. We had a tie, and all three of these uh, brilliant students earned a perfect 4.0. That's not a small feat. So what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to ask Jim to help me with this, and we're going to uh, give our students and provide our students with the medals themselves. Um, Miss Piper Aiden Bedley. Let's give these fine young students a round of applause. Thank you. Now it's time to announce the most prestigious of our faculty awards. In 1970, Dr. and Mrs. A.V. Huff established an endowment to support the Archie Vernon and Margaret Wanamaker Huff Faculty Prize. The Huff Faculty Prize is awarded annually to an instructor or instructors who exemplify outstanding professional qualities in teaching. The monetary prize that accompanies this award must be used for educational travel or study. It's my pleasure to announce our award winner at this time. Uh, and once again, we have uh, multiple award winners, and these are voted on by the faculty. Professor Eunice Naus, would you please join me on stage? And also, Professor Chris Neely, would you join me on stage as well? <laughs> Professor Naus began her teaching career just a little while ago in 1978, 41 years, if my math's right. She earned her BA from William Jennings Bryan College and her master's degree from University of Tennessee. She completed additional graduate work at Converse College and USC in Columbia. 
She serves as professor of biology and has served as division chair of the sciences and math division. She is an engaging and innovative teacher who is respected by her students and admired by her colleagues. Professor Naus, congratulations. Professor Neely began his career at SMC in the fall of 2016. He previously taught at Wofford College and he earned his BA from Wofford and his MFA from Goddard College. Since coming to SMC, the art department has grown substantially. In fact, it's the largest it's ever been in the college's history. A student art show is currently hanging in the gallery at Ellis, and you'll be over there afterwards for a reception. And if you want to walk inside and take a look, you will see some outstanding student art. And that is under the guidance and direction of Chris Neely. It's also a testimony uh, to hear this. One of our students, Bridget Davis, has been accepted to the Savannah College of Art and Design with every single, her cre every single one of her credits transferring from SMC to SCAD, including all of her art credits. SCAD is not a lightweight in the art world. So, Professor Neely, Professor Naus, congratulations. In addition to these two fine professors, another member of our faculty was formally recognized earlier this year. Dr. Benjamin Sloot, professor of mathematics, received the South Carolina Independent Colleges and Universities Excellence in Teaching Award. Professors receiving this annual award must be dedicated and committed professionals who effectively and passionately instruct and guide students to realize their potential. It also carries a significant stipend to travel and study as well. Ben, would you stand so that we can congratulate you at this time? In 2018, the faculty recommended, and we followed through to create a new recognition at the college, Professor Emeritus. The Professor Emeritus designation is not automatic, as it is at some places. Rather, it's a designation reserved for those who have served the college no less than 15 years in a full-time capacity, demonstrated a high level of commitment to SMC and its mission, and demonstrated a vest vested interest in the future of SMC. So you don't get away by retiring and forgetting about us. You have to be committed to SMC for life, which is a great thing. In 2018, the inaugural year, Professor Emeritus of the Professor Emeritus, the faculty selected Dr. Kathy Cannon and Professor Janet Wilson, who now carry that title. For 2019, the faculty has selected Professor Kent Newberry, Professor of Speech and Drama and the Executive Director of the SMC Theater Production, to receive this honor. Kent, would you please join me on stage? This is, uh, another, this is another youngster with us. Professor Newberry joined us 41 years ago, little theme here. He earned his bachelor's degree and master's of theater and educational specialist degree from the University of Florida. He's instructed and created and produced, directed more than 80 productions at SMC. On behalf of the faculty, students, staff, alumni, and trustees, both past and present, thank you for 40 wonderful years. You get that, 40 wonderful years? I'm going to leave comedy to the theater department. <laughs> Kent, I hereby convey to you the title of Professor Emeritus of Spartanburg Methodist College. We've had a fantastic year of the, at the college, and most of you know, as we've talked about, we're adding a bachelor's degree, a historic degree, uh, one that we haven't had since 1911, our founding. We also have some other highlights. Got to catch the flag. A couple of highlights just to let you know. Our athletic teams collectively have performed magnificently. 
Our ba women's basketball team won the regular season championship and were Region 10 tournament champions. Baseball and softball won their regular seasons titles, and they're also competing in the regional tournament this year, so they are actually not with us at this time. Three of our coaches have been named Coach of the Year, Brianna Clark, women's basketball, Dan Keneally, women's soccer, and Tim Wallace, baseball. Wrestlers Tramon Jenkins and Caleb Spears were named NJCAA All-American Wrestlers. On the academic front, we inducted more than 50 students in four national honor societies. You can tell just by looking and talking to these students, we have bright, motivated students taught by an exceptional faculty, and for that we are grateful. This summer, Dr. Adam Siegfried, professor of chemistry, will be working with Lindsay Fowler again. This is her second summer for a research experiment for undergraduates funded by the National Science Foundation. Every year, Professor Siegfried gives me this little blurb about what uh, they will be researching, and I, I have no idea what I'd talk about when he gives me that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer and just say that it's no different this year. I, I, I'm not quite sure, but it has something to do with designing and growing materials with various metals there's a lot of big and complex words that have to do with photosynthesis cells and all kinds of things. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. Here's the amazing thing. Lindsay is a history major. And so we have brilliant, across the board, bright, broad people. And I think that's a testament. She'll be continuing her education at Converse College just down the road. And not only are pioneers great in the classroom and on the playing field, we're servants as well. Probably the thing I'm most proud of. One of SMC's guiding principles is a commitment to service. And this year, faculty, students, and staff participated in a number of programs to enrich the community. One of my favorite activities is when we come to your school at Jesse Bobo Elementary. We spend students, faculty, and staff spend hours and hours reading to the students over there. I'm not quite sure who gets more out of it, us or them, but it is a joy. Kappa Sigma Alpha, our service fraternity, also dedicates a tremendous amount of time in the service of others. And when you have a school that does all these things, both academically, socially, community-wise, you have people that are special, and they tend to stay for long tenures. As you've heard, two of our professors, 82 years between two professors, which is quite a long tenure. And that's certainly the case for us, but there's a downside to that. Uh, eventually, they want to retire, and today is one of those days. Professor Kent Newberry, who, as you just heard a minute ago, has been with us 41 years and earned his degrees from the University of Florida uh, he is retiring at the end of this semester, as is Professor Mark Holy Cross. Professor Holy Cross has taught physics since arriving on campus 12 years ago. He earned his bachelor's degree from Finley College and a Master of Science in Physics from the University of Toledo. Prior to joining SMC, he had a long and successful career outside of higher education. We were very fortunate that he chose to spend the, the last decade of his career with us. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Pete Ayler. Pete has served higher education for 41 years as well. There's a collective sigh uh, over there. You, you heard that, Pete. I think I saw Pete and Gene sitting somewhere over here. Last 36 of those years with us. He's the Director of Career and Transfer Services. He teaches psychology. He earned his bachelor's degree from Limestone College and his Master of Education from Converse College. Also completed additional graduate work at Appalachian State and USC. For 36 years, he's been instrumental in the creation and leadership of KSA, our service fraternity. He's a true leader in the Spartanburg community, and those of you who are around here know him well. The good news is that Pete will continue to instruct as an adjunct professor in psychology. So, gone but not forgotten, gone but not gone. <laughs> Collectively, these three have served SMC for a total of... 89 years, three people, to each of you, thank you for your dedication and service to the college and to the students. You're going to be missed, and every single one of us here who have been fortunate enough to be touched by you know exactly what we're losing. Uh, there will be others that will take your duties, but there will be no one to take your place. So thank you, congratulations, and we wish you nothing but the best. And now, finally, the moment you've been waiting for, students. It's time for the presentation of the diplomas, recognizing the degrees you have earned. The Board of Trustees, representing the official authority of the college dating back to 1911, has authorized the president to confer degrees upon candidates who have completed all requirements. 
I now ask Dr. Gibbs, Dr. Mark Gibbs, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, to please present the candidates for graduation. President Cochran, the faculty of the college has certified that these students graduating today have successfully completed all degree requirements for their respective degrees. Those graduates whose names appear in the commencement program but are not here today will receive their degrees in absentia. Will all the degree candidates please stand? I hereby confer upon you the associate degrees whose requirements you have successfully completed with all appropriate honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Congratulations. We will now award the diplomas, and I have a special request at this time. If you'll just hold your applause until everyone's done and the uh, congratulations, just so each student gets uh, a chance of their own. Our faculty marshals, Professor David Gibson, and Pro Professor of Mathematics, and Dr. Mary Jane Farmer, Professor of Psychology, will direct the candidates to the stage to receive their diplomas. Professor Gibson and Dr. Farmer, would you please escort the graduates? Ms. Jill Johnson, Registrar of the College, and Mr. James Fletcher Thompson, Chair of the Board of Trustees, will assist in the awarding of the degrees. Dr. Gibbs, please call the graduates forward by degree and by name. The first group will receive the Associate in Arts degree, Piper Aiden Bedley, Summa Cum Laude, Caroline Parker Altman, Magna Cum Laude, Alexander Lewis Arrowood. Caitlin C. Airbab. Malik Barnes. Alexis Brianna Chantoine Beatty. Olivia Grace Bennett, magna cum laude. Jemiah Shanae Boyd. Donovan Michael Branch. Amanda Grace Cannon Lighty. Azada Kiara Cook. Noah Allen Deal, cum laude. Brianna Alexis Del Colo. Rebecca Edmondson. Trenard Farrell Jr. Juan Diego Figueroa. William Quinn Crawford Flint. Macy Foster. Lindsay Alexandria Fowler. Matt Gibson. Kenneth Reed Greer. Ryan C. Gregory. Jessica Lene Ham. Kelsey Lauren Hampton. Erica Monique Hemphill. Jalen Lee Hillary. Alyssa Jade Hill. Zakai.
Micaiah Denisha Hillstock. Molly Holder. Tyler Emerson Hudson. Matthew Christopher Huey. Thylea Jones, cum laude. Anastasia Moesha Kinlaw. Parker Knight. Megan Lee. Haley Mainville. Deshawn Mark, Mark, Deshawn Markel Mays. Alex McNeely. Ryan Yvonne Morlin. Michael Jerome Murphy. Nicholas Murray. James Scott Painter. Carrington Patterson. Mackenzie Rose Prater. Lily Pruitt. Jarrett Richardson. Kayvon A. Rivers. Khalil Dante Robinson. Amanda Lynette Rosa Branch. Fasha Simmons. Morgan Taylor Smith. Caleb Wayne Spears. Emma Vinesett. Brady Hager Wakefield. Landon Pickney Wakefield. Summa cum laude. Brady had also magna cum laude. My apologies. Kimberly Autumn Wynn. Sarah Lauren Youngblood, cum laude. The following students will receive the Associate in Business degree. Jason Amick. Grayson Crawford, summa cum laude. Andrea Anna Yurkovich, summa cum laude. Thank you. Marcus Johnson, summa cum laude. Kayla Ka Ka Joyner. Alexis Marie Keller. Joseph P. Kemp. Amber Jordan Knight. Brianna Natasha Mack. Aislinn Martinez. Camera T. Moore. Receiving the Associate in Business degree, the Associate in Science degree, and the Associate in Arts degree, Lily Elizabeth Perkins. Hey. 
receiving the Associate in Business degree, the Associate in Science degree, and the Associate in Arts degree, Perla Alejandra Ponce Rojo. Sedacia Monisha Rainey. Abigail Louise Simpson, cum laude. Rowan Nettie Sivers. Joseph Sprouse. Josh Sprouse, my apologies. Receiving the Associate in Criminal Justice degree will be the following students. Avril Annette Bethia Richardson. Nadifa Brown. <laughs> Fernando Calderilla Cum Laude. <laughs> Michelle Lynn Carpenter. <laughs> Katrina Katie Kostaki. Sean Nola Delport. Shermakia L. Elmore, summa cum laude. Ricky H.D. Getzinger. Amanda Griswold, cum laude. Hilda Emily Karinka. Thank you. <laughs> Quentin Meadows. <laughs> Courtney Millbrooks. Noah Ellis Moore. Latavia Louise Richardson, magna cum laude. Alex Ruiz. Patrick Frank Sarasto. Sorry. Francisco Javier Torres. James Forrest Wilson. Receiving the following Associate in Fine Arts degree, Lillian Grace Hammond. Emily Pardo Reyes. Nina Suzanne Stone, summa cum laude. Receiving the Associate in Religious Studies degree and the Associate in Arts degree, Madison Ainsley Church. The following students receive the Associate in Science degree, Brian Alejandro Acevedo. Chelsea Michaela Adams. Samantha Yvonne Alanis. Sebastian Camillo Caro Venegas. Jamie Alexis Dean. Malik Simaj Drayton. Did I botch that one? Sorry about that. Jacob Taylor Dunham. Heatherly Marie Edney, summa cum laude. James Kirby Edwards. Abriel Farr. Brianna N. Godfrey, summa cum laude. Jeffrey Douglas Wayne Good. Thank you. 
Alexis Gorey. Caleb Gossett. Wayne Giles. Courtney Nicole Harden Bagwell. James Donald Harrelson II. Carolyn Ann Hawkins. Megan Hannah Hayes. Christopher Hudgens. Quantaria Hughes. James Lorenzo Jackson. Tremont Benjamin Jenkins. Darrell Johnson. Ashley May Keneally. Receiving the Associate in Science degree and the Associate in Arts degree, Jacob Jordan Killian. Bailey Ann Lindler. Quinn Mann, cum laude. Jacqueline Danielle Marshall, cum laude. Michaela Jamie Ann Mays. Matthew McDonald. Elizabeth McGee. Devlin Gale Rose Mead. Bobby A. Wynn, cum laude. Mason Victor Patnud. Dawson Peacock, cum laude. Mariano James Pearson. Jonathan Pokam Pokuchit. Dallas LaShawn Polk. Melvin Aquavius Ponder. Jason Tariq Rogers, cum laude. Amarani Ruby Rosas Maldonado. Receiving both the Associate in Science degree and the Associate in Arts degree, Jakima Shamaya Shannon. Tiara Alexis Kayshawn Shippey. Shannon Nicole Sims. John Michael Smoke, cum laude. Zaria Victoria Stewart. Lindsay Ann Taylor. Chandler Scott Thomas, summa cum laude. Tabrin Lee Wallace. Alexander Wilson. Michael Dennis Wood, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and give a round of applause to the 2019 graduating class.
and may the fourth be with you. <laughs> So graduates, now we're calling you graduates of SMC. We celebrate along with you this big momentous occasion. And at this time, I'm going to invite our director of alumni relations to make the transition. Leah Pruitt, herself an alumna of the college, and she will lead you in the alumni oath the first time that's printed in the program. Thank you. Graduates. On behalf of Spartanburg Methodist College Alumni Association and the Alumni Council, I would like to congratulate each of you on reaching this educational milestone. You have worked hard to earn your degree and your future is bright and promising. Continue to build and grow upon your SMC foundation. At this time, I would like to ask all previous alumni uh, to stand and remain standing. I think we have some here. Graduates, now I ask you to stand and join these former TII, SJC, and SMC students. May we all recite the alumni oath printed inside your program. I hereby solemnly pledge unbroken allegiance to my alma mater in appreciation for opportunities for development afforded me as a student at Spartanburg Methodist College. I pledge active membership in the Alumni Association wherever I may be. Through association with fellow alumni, I shall ever do my best to uphold the ideals and traditions of Spartanburg Methodist College. I pledge as a citizen to exemplify the high ideals thus implied, rendering positive service to community, state, and nation, and to live as ever to bring honor and respect to Spartanburg Methodist College. Graduates, you are now alumni. We wish you, go ahead, give them a round of applause. We wish you each a lifetime of health, happiness, and success. You may be seated. As you walk down the hill, you made a wish and tossed a penny into the fountain. Whatever you wish for, we hope it comes true. Some alumni who graduated years before you have expressed their wishes for you, and I want to share those with you now. Carolyn Shaughnessy, class of 1993, says life is full of obstacles and setbacks, but how you choose to handle them makes the difference. Be patient. Learn from everything. Accept challenges. Be persistent in your pursuit and, a pro and be proactive in your work and in life. Wayman Dublin, class of 1985, says, before you take a job or do anything, sit down and survey yourself. Discover your passion. Do something with your life that you are passionate about. Spend your time making a life, not a living. Stephen Taylor, class of 2016, says your life will change in more ways than one. But the journey will be fun, enduring, and hard at times, but worth it. Keep your eyes focused on the goal. Let passion drive you to where your dreams are. And finally, Rebecca Hartzell, class of 1998, says, contribute to your 401k or an IRA now, or you may never be able to retire. And I think some of your parents may be feeling that now. But graduates, though you are leaving the grounds of SMC, it is my wish and hope that SMC never leaves you. I hope SMC will always stay near and dear to you. I hope you will stay involved with the SMC Alumni Association by attending alumni events, supporting SMC causes and campaigns, and returning to our beautiful campus often. This is your SMC. Please come back. Please come back home. And with great pioneer pride, I again congratulate you on becoming our newest SMC alumni, class of 2019. Give them a round of applause. Following the recession, we invite all of you to join us for a reception honoring the graduates on the patio surrounding Ellis, which is the big building behind you. Now, graduates, we're almost done. Several years ago, the fab, uh, faculty established a tradition to honor your achievements as members of the academic community. And when you leave, 
we are going to proceed uh, through a line of honor formed by the faculty and the platform party. We want to recognize your achievements. We salute you, and we are proud of you. I want you to please stand at this time and join. And now, as your classes and grading are now complete, may you strive toward excellence in all that you do. As the speeches conclude, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace in the world. And as the fanfare cease, may you sing of joy, even in the dark and lonely places. As the applause quiets, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. As you graduate today, may your achievements grow and cause growth in your communities. And may we all know the overwhelming blessings of the one who created all things. Go in peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good. 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 Good.